Hi everyone, Chris from Runteach, and I've got the fourth of those uh, Facebook Live videos that I did in lockdown last year, in April and June 2020. Now this one introduces the Neuro Warm Up, a great and fantastic and very effective warm up that only takes three or four minutes. We also introduce getting into and out of stances, so some good lunge stances, uh, what appears at first to be very simple exercises, but they're not necessarily easy to do. I do apologize that the uh, lighting is terrible. It was me just getting trying to get used to some of the devices. So it does seem a little bit washed out, but you should still get some great benefit. So enjoy. Good evening. Welcome to the fourth of the uh, these skill sessions. Hopefully you've managed to put some of the stuff into practice. Um, hopefully the core work was um, uh, what give you a bit of a workout last week and you were able to understand about the integration side of things and that you've been carrying on with the mobility drills and they're getting a, a good lot of benefit from that. And this week we're going to mix some of those things in together and we're going to revisit some aspects of the stance stuff, some mobility. We're going to do a very different warm up tonight for you and then we'll look a little bit of personalizing some of those strength exercises that you can do. Hi James and hi Sarah. Okay so tonight's warm-up is going to be very very different. The ones the forward runners who have joined me on some of the winter interval sessions will have done this whole uh, warm-up as one unit. We've also done bits and pieces of it as we uh, have done some of the other interval sessions that we've done. Okay, it's a neurological warm-up, so it works with your brain. No surprise there, given that's uh, the angle that I uh, get things at. So just give everyone a few moments to uh, get onto the page and then we'll uh, start with that warm-up. Now the warm-up does involve you touching your face. So in this age that we're in now, I want you to be safe. So if you haven't washed your hands, Please go and wash your hands and I'll give you a few moments to do that and whilst you're uh, washing your hands if you need to and I'm going to give a couple of shout outs and I want to give a shout out to a brand new running club so new that they actually haven't had a chance to run together because of the lockdown and that's Bad Rat Running Club which is the Bridgewater in District Road and Trail Running Club down in Bridgewater in Somerset so welcome along guys Hope you find tonight interesting, a little bit of education in there. You'll find some range of motion that you just didn't know you had, which is brilliant. And we'll start to build up some of this foundation for going ahead. Okay. Hi, Matt. Hi, Sean. Okay. So, before we do our warm up, everyone who's been joining us for the last three weeks will know about assess and reassess. Okay. So, for anyone who's new along, then uh, we always choose something that we can assess. So normally a range of motion is the best thing to assess and that's because we can see quite instantly whether an exercise is helping us or a drill is helping us, whether it's neutral or whether it's not helping us at all. And that's okay if it doesn't help us, that's, that's perfectly acceptable as well. It just means we put it in a slightly different bucket than the ones that do help us and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So. For everybody who's new tonight, we assess because we're working at the speed of your nervous system, okay? And the speed of your nervous system is basically instant. So we can instantly get feedback as to whether a drill or an exercise is good for us or in, in, is a performance exercise or whether it's the one we have to do a little bit more work on. Now, if you look at what some of the traditional ways of training are, so strength training, stretching, for example, these can take weeks and weeks, months, sometimes years to get uh, proficient at. So if you were to go and get a, a, try and work out a range of motion in your shoulders and you were to go down the stretching route, you'd have to stretch very consistently to be able to get good range of motion in the, that shoulder, if indeed you can. But working at the level of the brain, we can do it very, very quickly. So we're going straight into the nervous system here. Okay, so who we got here? We've got Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Hi everyone, hi Sean. Right, so let's crack on and let's get into our 
neurological warm-up. So let's assess something first of all. So the types of things we want to assess range of motion wise. Okay, some of the really popular ones is to have your arm out to the side, thumb on top, and see how much shoulder adduction you can get. Now, what's important about this is not to put your head across. If you put your head across to meet your ear, that's cheating. Okay, so how much can you get without putting your head across? Check both sides. Another one that's very common that people use is be able to get shorter range of motion this way. How much can you get this way? Arm straight. Again, you're having your elbow on top of your uh, elbow on top of your your thumb on top of your hand. Getting range of motion. Another good one that uses rotation. So arms out straight, and then you're rotating across the way. So choose one of these. See where you are. Maybe choose one that you know you're maybe not so great at. You're a bit stiff in. Okay, so choose one of those and assess where you are. I'm just going to adjust the uh, angle of the camera just a little bit, just so. Gosh, probably, probably too much, but we'll see how we get on with that. Okay. Ta -da. Right. So, now with your assessment of where you are, we're going to start the neurological warm up. I'm going to come and kneel down here, but I want you guys to do it standing up. I'm just going to come a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So first one we're going to do is we're going to have our eyes closed. We're going to rub our eyelids gently. So we're going to take our, our fingers and we're just going to gently rub our eyelids. And we do about 10 circles in each direction. And all the new people think, who's that mad person doing that? Well, I'll explain later. Okay, so we're going back the other way. Okay, so then we're going to turn this into a hand washing uh, movement. So I'm just going to move this down here. So, face washing, so say. Washing your face with your hands in one direction, and then the other direction. Okay, and then you want to get your hands and fingers into a kind of claw like, and we're going to comb through the hair, making sure you get right through to your scalp, and you can see my well out of control lockdown hairstyle. Okay, so again about 10 of those. Okay, and then we're going to feel around to the back of the head and we're going to feel down till we get some soft bits just at the back of the skull here, base of the skull, and we're going to again go about 10 circles in one direction and 10 circles in the other direction. And then we're going to find a spot in the middle and we do 10 circles just where that bony bit is there, and 10 circles in the other direction. Okay, right. Ears next. So, hands on ears, massage the earlobes, massage the top of the ears, all around the ears. Not in the ears, just all around the ears. Okay, and then we're going to turn that into throat. So down on your throat like this. Okay. Back up here. The next one we're going to move to is we're going to use our hand down our shoulder and arm. If you've got a watch or a ring on, uh, it might be helpful to take it off just so you've got a smooth surface to come down. Okay, so it's always a bit weird when you're in this kind of view. In the camera. So we're going to start from the top of the shoulder and we're going to go all the way down to the fingertips. So this is really important to go all the way down to the fingertips. Okay, shoulder all the way down. Again, I'm doing about 10 of these. Then you're going to turn your hand over. I'm going to go from the fingertips all the way up to the shoulder. So people who have been with us for a few weeks will know this is all about sensory input. Lost count, we'll do a couple more. Okay, let's go switch to the other side. So from the shoulder all the way down to the fingertips. Okay, and then from the fingertips all the way up. Good, okay. Now we're gonna work with the top of the chest and the top of the shoulder. So we'll take our right hand onto our left the top of the chest and we're just going to do circles. So you may start to be feeling a little bit warm at this point. And we do circles the other way. 
And some of you may be able to feel feeling a bit more energized. So we switch over and do the other side. I find this always really energizes me doing this particular warm up. Stimulating all that sensory input. Okay, good. So the next one we're going to do is find where your ribs are. I'm going to follow the line just underneath your ribs. So we're going to follow that in circles. Just do a few more and do about 15 of these. Okay, then when you put your hands behind your back, into the, find the small of your back, hands just in fit, light fists, and we're going to do circles here. Now, if you can get a bit higher, just for moving your hands like that, great. If you can only get down here, that's okay as well. Okay, and then we'll do the other direction. Okay, then we're going to move on to the legs. So we're going to go down the back of the legs. I'll show you from behind. We're going to go down the back of the legs, going to come around the front, and then up the front. Okay, so we'll do about 10 of these. So we're going to come down and up the front. And I know what you're thinking. He's a lunatic. And my daughter did say to me, if you weren't weird, Dad, you wouldn't be. <laughs> if you weren't weird, you wouldn't be my dad about sums it up okay let's do a couple more of these okay good now we want to do some jumps so what we're, we're jumping we're doing about 20 small jumps nice and light on your feet just off your toes so just coming off the ground and no more okay then we want to do circles on your foot if you want to hold on to a wall for support oh, that way would be good and just on a massage, just circles again on the sole of your foot, going for about 10 or 15 in one direction, and then 10 or 15 in the other direction. And all of you that have been practicing your balance skills, of course, this will be super simple, easy for you. We'll switch over to the other side. Okay, good. Okay, 20 more little jumps. Okay, now then. Next thing we want to do, take your thumbs and then just put them just below your eye line. Now, we're going to move the thumb in an arc from the bottom up to the top. Okay, but crucially, what I want you to do, and I'll show you on this side, is keep your head straight. And I just want your eyes to follow your thumb up and then back down. When it comes back down, then the other side takes over. Okay, so we're going to do about three or four of these. So here we go. Left up and down. Right up and down. Left up and down. Right up and down. Left up and down. Okay, then we're going to bring it closer to you. And then we're going to go right up and down, keeping your head still, left up and down, right up and down, left up and down, one more, right up and down, left up and down. Good. Well done. Now go and reassess that range of motion. Okay, let's see if that's made a difference to you. So which, whatever you used as a range of motion, test. I'd be really interested to see how you guys have got on with that. Was that better for you? I mean, it's hugely better for me in that rotation. I can get right round there now. Uh, you know, if you use that, I mean, that's just, <laughs> it's, amazing. it's just amazing. So hopefully you found some use in that. And now I'm going to explain a little bit more for the people who haven't been following along so far. But uh, James, the left is still stronger balance than my right need more practice. Good. Well, you keep on practicing, James. And remember, when you get into the one that's a bit weaker, do some of those thoracic slides, and it'll help to uh, strengthen that up. Okay, so a little question for you before I go on to explain that neuro warm-up is, how heavy is your brain? I will come back to the answer to that in a little bit. What I want to know first, though, is how is that neurological warm-up for you in terms of quality of movement? Yep, good. 
Glad to hear it, Sarah. Much better to touch the toes. Fantastic. That's what we want to hear. And it is all a bit weird. I understand that, but it's a great warm up to do, particularly at this time when you're, when you know you're in the house before you go for a run. In most cases, so good to practice that. I understand that you might not want to do it on the start line, but we can maybe do some of the mobility stuff we're going to do in a minute. Okay, but hopefully you're feeling a bit more warmed up, a bit looser, so the quality of your movement is higher, and a little bit more range of movement. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Okay, so the next one we're going to go into is the mobility routine. And then I'm going to come back and for the people who have just, you know, who have joined us for the first time, I'll explain a little bit more about why we're taking this approach. Okay, because understanding it is how much is a how much is a P <laughs> how much is a P way. Brilliant. Okay, so mobility routine. So this is our ankle tilts. So remember where that assessment was for the range of motion. Have a quick retest just before we start it. Okay, so let's see whether this is going to help you just as much as the neurological warm up. Is it going to add to it? Is it going to take away from it? Okay, so a quick reassessment and then ankle tilt. So for the people who haven't done this before, we're standing in a, in a hip width position. We're just going to move our foot forwards, left foot forwards, and then we're just going to turn the ankle out to the outside and it's as simple as that. I'm going to do five of those, okay? So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, then we're going to move it to the inside. One, two, three, four, five. Again, a super, super, super simple exercise, but it's doing some really quite incredible stuff in your brain. Now we're going to take that out to the outside. As the bond's a bit new for everybody, it's exactly the same exercise, but just in a slightly different position. Feet straight, okay, and we're just going to go to the outside. Of course, your range of motion when you change the stance position is going to be different. Okay, so just work with what you've got. You might have a little bit of crunching on the outside of your foot. Then we're going to come in. And we've got a few of these different positions that we can use. We're not going to today, but uh, it's really good for prediction and stuff, which is what we're talking about in a second. Okay, so right foot forwards, outside. Lots of crunching in my foot today. Okay, and then inside. Okay, and then we're going to take out to the side. Again, foot to the outside, so we're tilting our ankle out to the outside. And the way we want to feel is just is down here. So this is, the, this is what we're working with, this part down here. Okay, that's where we want to get to. And then five on the inside. Obviously on the inside, we're using the opposite side of the ankle. Okay. Reassess that. Quick reassessment. Has that helped? Okay. Can you get more range of motion? Does the quality feel better? If it does, that's a high performance drill. So we're going to have three buckets. We'll have our high performance bucket. We'll have our neutral bucket. So high performance, it really helps you. Neutral, meh, kind of neither here nor there. And then we have our rehab bucket, which is the ones that have made range of motion worse or made the quality worse. So when I talk about quality, I'm talking about how does the movement feel? Okay, Is it easier, even if you've got no more range of motion, so you can't get any further, say, than that, is it easier to get to that position? Okay, so that's what we talk about quality. So we've got an increase and in, in, and quality. So the increase would, would be an indication of threat to the brain, uh, lack of threat, so a reduction of threat. Or if it did, wasn't so good for you, it would be an increase in threat. Okay, So threat and quality. So if that was a high performance drill, great. Make a mental note that that's one you can do before you go out for a run. And that's, that's part of my pre-run routine is to do that. The other one is, is uh, the toe pulls. So toe pulls, again, for the new people, we're working this part of our foot. We're having it straight, so the foot is straight, and then we're we're basically pulling towards us. Now, if you get a bit of cramp doing this, elevate your foot and do the same movement, okay? For those of you that are, have been doing it for a few weeks, I want a bit more stimulus in there. You can actually contract the calf as you pull it in and just hold it for a bit longer. But for the rest of us, we're just gonna go dip one. We're just gonna do three of these, three, and then we're gonna turn around the other side. We don't have to turn around. I'm turning around to show you. <laughs> Two, three. Okay, and then we're going to do 45 degrees. So start straight, drop it to the outside. We pull forward and at the same time we're pushing out 45 degrees. And then we're going to do the same on the side, drop it out. Good, and assess, 
reassess. Was that good for you? Did that work? Was it a performance drill that you can use as part of your mobility before you go out for a run? Okay, so let me know. Okay, right, so what's everyone saying here? Good, some, oh, brilliant, some really good, good, uh, excellent, Sandra. Oh, good, much better stretching afterwards. Everyone's getting some good range of motion for that. That's fabulous. Absolutely. Uh, Claire, Colin, yes. Yay. So, feeling more energized, Sean. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Brilliant. Good, good, good. Okay, so the answer to how heavy is your brain, it is three pounds, which is about just under one and a half kilos. In terms of value, it's there is no value you can put on it. It is quite incredible. In terms of well, I believe, and what the research tells us is, you are your brain. Okay, everything you do to your brain, everything you goes through, um, in terms of the inputs and the outputs, everything is controlled by the brain, and that comes to range of motion, it comes to speed, it comes to how far you can go. You a lot of you fatigue and pain as well. Okay, so we're just gonna. We'll come back to that again in a minute because I want to ask you a question. How many brains do you have? Okay. So whilst you have a little think about that, the next one we're going to move into is stance position. So this is going back to week one where we talked about getting in and out of stance. And we're going to do a little exercise with that. And then I'm going to explain again a little bit the importance of why I think you should practice this on a consistent basis. And I practice this every single day. Okay, so to explain again how we get into stance. So we're going slight heel to toe into stance position, weights on the, on the front foot. Okay, seems really simple. It is a simple exercise, but it's not necessarily easy for some people. We want to have neutral body position. Okay, so that means not bent forward like this. Neutral body position, but still having the weight on the front foot. Both feet straight. Okay, have a little bit of distance in between your feet if you can. So hip width apart is what we're looking for. Okay, so let's do five times into the left. So one, two, three, four, five. Make sure that your setup is correct. Feet are in the right place. Okay, let's go across to the right hand side then. One, two, three. Adjust your feet if you have to. Four, five. Okay, so I want you to, to feel more grounded. Of course, I forgot to say to the new people, we I do this in bare feet. I recommend you doing it in bare feet because the shoes uh, will be an interface between your feet and the ground. So you get much better ground feel if you take your socks and shoes off and get good balance on a stable surface before we start to add in uh, basically interference which is the shoe so we can you think that the shoe's got the layer of foam in between even fairly minimal shoes have uh, other, right, other, apart from obviously the very minimal ones and you you've got to try and fight a little bit through that shoe to find stability okay so if, if we're working barefoot then we don't have to worry about that just now okay we can that's a skill we can build on and as you go out running you'll probably find you're getting a little bit more stability okay so here's a little exercise we're going to do uh, guys the night before in week one when I hold up this hand I'm not going to say anything throughout this exercise when I hold up this hand you're going to go into a stance on that side and then you're going to and then when I drop my hand you're going to come back to the middle if I hold up this hand okay you're going to come to that side and then come back to the middle when I hold up both hands you're going to do a body weight squat and just go down as far as is comfortable for you hopefully you've got more range of motion in your squat now than you ever thought you had before Okay, so quick repetition of the instructions. This hand stance on this side. This hand stance on this side. Both hands, body weight squat. Okay, in three, two, one, let's go. I'm going to come back to the middle every time I drop my hands. Okay, I'm going to come a little bit closer. Good. 
Good, we'll start speeding up a little bit now. Okay. So we get the accuracy going on those dances. Okay, make sure your posture's right, your feet are in the right place. Here we go. Okay, almost there guys, get going, really super simple but not so easy drill. And relax, okay, so, answer to the question, how many brains do we have? Is it my body weight? <laughs> <laughs> Are you counting the celebrum as separate? That's a question from Lynn. An interesting question, Lynn. Okay. Interesting question. Okay, so are we counting the cerebellum as different? Well, of course, you have one brain, but as Lynn mentioned there, it's really helpful to think of it as two sections. Okay, so we have our old brain down here and that is the cerebellum here and we have the brain stem and these two are incredibly important well it's all important um, <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute and then we have the new brain or what's called often called the higher thinking brain this is where our cortexes are and the frontal lobe occipital lobe etc okay so when you do any accelerated learning work or when you, you do any kind of uh, higher thought work in terms of meditation and stuff. This is this is kind of what everyone is expecting you to, to work on. So when I was doing brain training with kids a few years ago, school kids to help them pass exams and everything, we were working very much up here. Because the job of this brain here is to inhibit the stuff that's happening down here. Because this part of your brain has no filter in effect. So it just says what it likes. It acts as it does. Okay, so if you're angry or anything else, it'll just fire it out. And this brain here, this part of the brain here, um, his job is to inhibit that. Okay, so if you've got um, some functions up here that aren't working properly, that's when you can have behavior that seems, um, you know, out of character and very, very aggressive. As I say, most people are really, uh, put a lot of emphasis on working up here, um, but I like to work with the whole thing. This part of the brain is very, very important because this part of the brain down here is responsible for a lot of the integration. Integration happens all over, but down here, the integration of the inputs to give simple instruction to the outputs is where it happens. So a lot of the work that I do um, is down here. And when I'm looking at gate now, and I'm going back over a lot of the gate stuff that I looked at, is actually you can see that there is some kind of challenge in this part that can lead to much quicker fixes than trying to do it solely biomechanically. So if we look at neuromechanically, then uh, we can make changes lightning fast and they can have an effect uh, for a long, you know, for, in a much more robust way, shall we say. Okay, and we didn't necessarily need to look into it in quite as much detail to start off with. It's uh, working with the brain is really quite quite amazing. So we talk about stance, so why is stance important? Well all of this stuff with the brain is all about threat. So we've talked about it before, but anyone who didn't you know, pick up on that before, if your brain feels threatened in any way, then it will, it will start to display stuff that tries to stop you doing the activity that feels threatening. Okay, so let's just talk about running for a minute. If you're running and your balance is off, your vision is off, or um, your range of motion is off slightly, then your brain sees that as a threat because it can't predict what's going to happen next. Okay, because it's all about prediction. And the brain's number one question it's always asking is, is this safe? Is this safe? Is this safe? Is this, is this safe? Okay, so if it deems it as being not being safe, it will start to do stuff that will stop you or slow you down. Okay, so take running for example, if your vision isn't great and you're trying to run fast, then 
it will start to slow you down. So it might start to fatigue you. It might put natural speed limits in there. If you push through, which a lot of people do, they push through that, that initial barrier, then the brain will find something else. And that something else will quite often be niggles uh, or pains or mystery injuries that reoccur after a very long period of time of being away, they come back. Okay, so this is the kind of level we're talking about. And talking about, should I say, sorry. And this is why personalizing the type of exercise that you do to your, to your own nervous system, okay, is really, really important. And most fitness, um, running coaches, fitness coaches, most systems, everything, they don't work like that. They give you the number of reps, the number of sets to do, the types of exercises to do. And yes, there are some modifications, but they tend to be modifications if you can't do that exercise because you can't get into that uh, range of motion or you know, you're not fit enough to be able to do it. They don't say, okay, well, that's a performance exercise because your nervous system and your brain really likes that and that actually is not working for you at the moment. So let's put that to one side and then we'll work on changing some variables, okay? So I want to give you some examples of that using using an exercise in a minute. Uh, the other thing about stance, just to get back to that for a second, is that quite often you see uh, something called a crossover gait. Okay, so crossover gait is, just to give you a bit of running form stuff here as well. So crossover gait is where you're running in quite narrow, a bit like a, a model going down a catwalk. That can have problems in how you place your feet, so they can lead to forced pronation uh, and all kinds of imbalances. It also throws off your general sense of balance. And once you start to lose your balance, then you can start to go all over the place and it's just really not a very efficient way of running if you haven't earned it. It means that you can't get into the strength and stability of your glutes. So by practicing stances hip width apart, we're learning to stack our hips over our knees over our ankles. Okay, so we're learning to be much more stable being hip width apart as we run. Now you will see elite level athletes, particularly endurance runners, who will run with a narrow uh, gait because it is energy wise more efficient but that's not something most of us need to worry about at the level that we run at okay we're talking about sort of the top one percent of elite athletes but they've also done a lot of work to activate and engage the whole glute and core muscles that we talked about last week so they've earned the right to have a narrow gait as mere mortals haven't so a good thing to think about practicing that stance is when you go to put it into practice running it's just to think about, oh, are my, are my feet coming in? Or can I learn to have them a little bit further apart? Okay, and I see that's very, very common. I would say probably over 80% of the people that I've done an assessment on will have that as, as one of their traits. And there's other reasons for it, but being aware of it is always the first step. Okay, question number three then. True or false? Is pain an input to the brain? Okay, so true or false? Is pain an input to the brain. Right, so exercise personalization. So last bit we're going to do is push-ups. So we look at push-ups and everyone loves push-ups. But don't worry, you don't all have you don't have to just on the floor, okay? So three three options for you to do push-ups. So we can do them in a standard position. Okay? From here down, we can do them with uh, on knees going down or if you can't do either of those okay I want you to do them against a wall okay so whatever works for you just hope I don't fall through these doors okay you can do press up on the wall okay the press up itself is not it is the exercise but I want to show you how you can personalize these for your own nervous system okay so before we start I want you to uh, False, false. Okay, good. We'll come back to that. Okay, so what, what I want you to do is to assess. So assess something before we do this. So I get your range of motion assessment, whatever it was you used, whether it was rotation, bending down. Okay, make an assessment. Make a mental note of where you are. And then we're just going to work with two press-ups at a time. Okay, so whether you're doing it standard, knees, wall, I want you to use a neutral shoulder width um, apart and have your feet shorter width apart as well. And we're just going to do two 
ordinary press ups and then do a quick reassessment has it made any difference has it not made any difference has it made it worse okay now I want you to change that so now I want you to have a narrow grip so hands together hands together two one two reassess okay so reassess that again has that made it better or made it worse or not made any difference at all to your range of motion and then we're going to move on to wide grip okay how was that reassess good bad indifferent okay just make make a mental note and we're just going to change it up a little bit okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to go offset so left hand up right hand down about shorter width apart or make it slightly wider whatever you feel comfortable okay and we're going to do offset with the right hand down do two of those okay quick reassessment better or worse me personally I found this to be amazing for me weirdly who would think that changing your position of a push-up would make such a difference but it, it does or it can do and we're going to change it around so the left hand is now lower down and the right hand is up two push-ups and reassess okay and then let's just see whether any of those positions are any better for you <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now having a bit of an idea, we're going to play another little game where I'm going to say left or right. So I'm going to say it rather than hold up my hand. And if I say left, then I want you to offset with the left hand down and the right hand up. If I say right, I want to offset it so the right hand is down and the left hand is up. And when I say middle, I want you to do a press up with your hands at the same level, but it's your choice whether you do a standard um, width, an in, a narrow width, or a wide width. Whatever worked for you the best is the one I want you to use. Okay, and we're going to do three sets. And we're only going to do, do six reps per set. Okay, so if you do the first set on the floor and then decide you need to be on your knees or on, against the wall, that's absolutely fine. Okay, you do whatever works for you. What I want to see, what I want to demonstrate to you is that you can personalize pretty much any of these, any exercise that you do. Okay. John, well, yeah, good. John, wider stance and offset stance, really good difference. Good, good. And before I started doing this stuff, I wouldn't have thought that changing your stance would make a difference to your range of motion. But this is how powerful this, this stuff really is. Okay, so if we're ready, Okay, so remember, if I say left, then your left hand is down, your right hand is up. If I say right, your right hand is down, your left hand is up. That was right around. If I say middle, then it's whatever width, narrow, um, standard, or wide, whatever's better for you. Okay, here we go. In three, two, one. Middle. Left. Right right middle left okay take a rest for a few seconds again if you want to change from being standard press up to being uh, on your knees or against the wall then feel free okay and here we go second set in three two one left left right middle left middle and rest good well done okay I'll explain why the offset is also good and why you might find it really beneficial after we've done our last set okay let's give you a few more seconds rest and yes, you might feel this a little bit tomorrow uh, or the next day if you haven't done push-ups for a while. 
but hopefully finding a different uh, hand stance on it is going to give is make it a little bit easier for you than you might normally find it. Plus, also doing all this warm up and all the mobility stuff hopefully will make you feel stronger and better range of motion, so better quality movement. Okay, last set. Here we go. In three, two, one, left. Middle, left, right, left, right, and relax. Well done. Okay. Answer to the question, if you said false or if you thought false, you're absolutely right. Pain is 100% of the time an output. Okay, it's always an output. It's never ever an input. And this is very different thinking than it used to be and has been for hundreds of years. And still within the fitness industry and within the medical profession, people are still finding this hard to get around. But modern pain science and modern neuroscience together have shown that, that you know pain is an output. So what happens is when you start to experience pain, there are 12 areas of your brain that light up. And some of those areas, as you'd imagine, are sensory areas, some are motor areas. So they're up in those cortexes that we uh, talked about earlier, up in this, this new brain. Okay. We also have areas that we might be surprised about. So things like memory. So when you injure your knee, your brain starts thinking, oh, or starts looking into memories. Have I done this before? Okay. Is it worse than before? Is it better than before? Is it, you know, not as bad as before. So it starts processing all of this information it's, and it's happening incredibly quickly. Context and environment are taken into account as well. So where did I hurt my knee before? Okay. Was it in a race situation? Oh, I'm in a race situation now. That means it must be probably more sore than if it had been done in training, for example. Um, social influence can have an effect on pain and our expectations and belief can have an impact on pain as well and it's a really important concept to get because we effectively can separate injury from pain because you can have people who have got severe injuries and no pain at all and you have people who have lots and lots of pain but no injury and there may well have been an injury at some point maybe years ago but because of the way the brain works and we're not dealing with some of the current threats, it starts to produce pain somewhere where it was very good at producing it before. OK, so just to finish off, guys, what I want you to do is I want you to choose one thing that we did this evening that you would consider to be a performance drill. So whether that's something from the neurological warm up, whether that's ankle tilts or toe pulls, whether it was getting in and out of stance, whether it was one of the push-up uh, positions. Okay, if it's if it's anything other than push-ups, so ankle tilts or foot pulls, uh, toe pulls, then do five on each side. If it's the press-ups, then just do two sets of two in whatever position you choose to do. If it's neurological warm-up, just do as much of it as as we do to do to fit and timing-wise with the other things. Okay, right. Um, whilst we're doing that, have a think about asking any questions. There's a bit of a delay between me saying stuff and then comments coming up. So uh, think about if you've got any questions to ask me and I will do my best to answer them. OK, so here we are. So choose something that was really good, beneficial. Do a quick re reassessment before you do it. OK, so what's where am I now? Range of motion, quality of motion. Make, just make a quick mental note and then let's do a high performance drilled style to finish off. I'm going to do ankle tilts because I love these, but you do whatever worked for you the best. Okay. I'm going to do outside and inside on these. Remember if you're doing push-ups, just do two sets of two. And those push-ups, by the way, they're really good for working on your spine. So if you found them really beneficial in an offset position, that's because um, I'm going to do some toe pulls as well, just because I like those ones. Offset position is because it's working with your spine as well. So it's getting, giving good sensory information about the position of your back up to your brain. So if you've had shoulder issues or back issues, that can be really beneficial to 
uh, those types of exercises and you don't need to do very much either uh, yeah, uh, I'm clear. yes brilliant yes absolutely Having, helping clients having dyspraxia find brain development amazing. It, it is absolutely awesome. Um, the, the, if you're interested, there's, a, there's a, um, a really good book, I can't remember what it's called, just off the top of my head, uh, about neuroplasticity. And it's, it's really quite amazing what we can train the brain and what we can, um, how the brain can, can just help us perform in, in all areas of our life. And I'm hoping that as you do more of the balance stuff, as you do more of the this mobility stuff and start building in some parts of that neural warm up is that um, you'll see some other areas of your life improve as well. So your general stress levels will come down a little bit. Maybe you maybe notice that you're starting to lose a little bit of weight or your body composition is improving or just generally you're getting back to your old self where you had just less stress in your life. So there's some of the, the benefits that you, you can get. Um, some some of the best balance exercises, getting left side and right side working together effectively. Um, yeah, we did we did balance it, uh, Claire. If you look back at the second week, so two weeks ago, we did a whole uh, that session was all on balance, and the way I look at balance is to go off a stable surface first. So don't worry, don't bother about Bosu balls or balance boards or anything else because we want to learn to balance on a stable surface. Uh, where it's not changing um, and simple progressions in terms of stance progressions that we we, we, we uh, did in that session are uh, we have a wide stance and there's a there's a there's a, a balance app as well so if you go to that session it, there's a link to it. it's runteach.com forward slash rt balance with a capital b you can register for a free account it's a, it's a app in development it's very very basic but it just reminds you of some of the, the stances so you've got a wide stance You've got a neutral stance, you've got a feet together stance, um, tandem stance where you've got right foot in front or left foot in front, and then you've got right leg, left leg. And the way that I would, and this is static, so head facing forwards. And the way, to, way I would work it is to stand there for between 15 and 30 seconds. If you can do that well, then try it with your eyes closed. And then you can try it in the different stances. Uh, find a stance that's quite challenging for you and then do some movement stuff whilst you're in that stance. So for example, you could do some hand figure of eights whilst you're in that stance. And then come and do a reset. And then you try it again. And you might find that's improved it. Or do some uh, thoracic slides or glides where you're gliding across the way. Either across the way, forward or back or combined. So you get into position to do that. But if you go and back and watch that session, you'll see find a little bit more a lot more detail about that okay thanks Leclerc. yep see you later so i do say the 30 minutes and we always go on for a lot lot longer uh ankle tilt's really really good that's brilliant brilliant well done excellent okay no, guys uh, can you do these in trainers before yes you can do absolutely and helen what i do quite often I prefer doing it barefoot before I go out the door, but I often find um, if I've got to do that and I'm already out the door, I'll just do some ankle tilts and some toe pulls, a bit harder to do in shoes, but you still do them, it's still beneficial. Uh, but yeah, I, I find those really helpful. Another one I find really helpful is just to get your foot up behind you and just do some foot circles and just do you know five or six on each side. Again, you don't need to do very much of this stuff, okay? Brilliant. Oh, well done, Sandra. Nearly touched your toes. Fantastic. Keep working at it, Sandra. Okay, and you will get there. Good. And thank, you, thank you for joining us, Richard. And yes, put them into practice. Go look at some of the other sessions. And I will hopefully see you all next week. Have a brilliant week of running. Put some of this stuff into practice, even if it's just very, very little bits. That's all you need to do. Okay. Thanks again, guys, and this video will be on the, on the web page along with the other one, on the Facebook page along with the other ones. Take care, and if you want to, you know, private message me anything, any questions about it going on, then please do. Okay, guys, see you later.